On Wednesday, Justin Trudeau's new cabinet was sworn in. We saw many familiar faces and some new names. Mona Fortier is one of them. She is now the Minister of Middle Class Prosperity and Associate Minister of Finance. She joins me in studio. Hello, Minister. Hello. Welcome. Congratulations Thank you very for much. your appointment. So the Minister of Middle Class Prosperity, there's a lot of, a lot of people have been talking about it. What does that mean? So first we have to take them both together, Minister of Middle Class Prosperity and Associate Minister of Finance. Uh, the idea is the fact that we have been in the past year uh, going around as I was a platform co-chair and we heard that we need a strong middle class to have a strong economy. And this lens will be the lens that I will be uh, working on to make sure that in all of our measures and priorities we have that middle class lens. But you know, middle class prosperity seems something that every single one of your colleagues in cabinet should be thinking about. Why have, you know, a minister specifically for that? That's what questions people are asking about it. What is that? And isn't that what you should all be doing? Well, you know, there's no unique definition for middle class and we've realized and we've heard Canadians that we have different regional realities across Canada, urban, rural, remote. We have really to take into consideration that we can't have a one size fits all approach. That is why I'm going to be coming in and be tasked, I hope I will see my mandate letter soon, be tasked to work to make sure we have that lens and um, have measures and policies that will respond to the needs of Canadians across the country. Okay, so can you define for us what is the middle class then? Again, I'm back at saying middle class is, uh, doesn't have a unique definition. We have to make sure we represent the realities in a rural, remote, or even urban setting. Regional differences, we know the West is not exactly like the East. And uh, respond to the needs of families and making life more affordable for those families. So basically what you're saying is middle class, well, it depends, you know, what the cost of living is, what real estate costs yeah, are. What exactly. is, is, that, is that what we're talking about? Like what could be middle class in Prince Edward Island would not be middle class in, in Vancouver for in Vancouver. example okay and but really respond to the the needs in the different regions and uh, bring those together just for example uh, as being uh, the member of Parliament for Ottawa Vanier I realized there's such a diversity and it resembles the social fabric of Canada except for the rural setting so I will have to take a bit of that experience and also work with my colleagues to bring the that lens across the decision making and policy development that we will be um, presenting in the next uh, government. I, I understand what you say about income. You know, what, what, what could appear to be a low income in British Columbia may not be in the Atlantic provinces. However, your government's first order of business is tax cuts for the middle class. Mm -hmm. So, how do you calculate tax cuts for the middle class if middle class is not a, a, a sort of something that is well defined? So who gets tax cuts? So we will uh, develop legislation and I'm hoping to uh, work with my colleague to present something. But uh, one of the criteria will be to be means tested. We can't just do uh, a cut to say only this uh, percentage of people will receive an amount. So we will be means testing it and present legislation to really support the um, middle class and uh, making sure that they have uh, a, a way of having a tax cut. Means tested. It It'll Explain. be balanced. Give me an example. Uh, give me okay. Just so give me an example. So the Canada Child Benefit. Yes. Uh, when we put it for we put forth the Canada Child Benefit, not every parent got the same amount uh, according to their revenue, how many children they had, uh, and which um, level of uh, of income there was. Uh, they, the decision is made of how much the family will receive. So it'll be another formula like that that we'll present. Yeah, obviously not, not universal. But no. so, so this is the first time you're, you're in cabinet. Yes. You were elected in 2017 yes. in a by-election here in Ottawa Vanier. What do you, you know, you've been a liberal for a long time yep. and, 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 and very active. Um, what do you really, now you're in cabinet, you're thinking, okay, this is my dream job. It is. What? are you going to do to change or to do something that, how are you going to make your mark? 
So uh, thank you for that question. I um, strongly believe that we have to work with all parliamentarians. And yes, uh, as a Liberal uh, member, I'm very proud of what we presented as a platform. But we do also have to work with stakeholders, with Canadians across the country, and even with the opposition, as we are in a minority parliament, and find ways to really bring policies that will work to grow our economy. That is something that I start with, collaboration okay. and, and, and bringing and building uh, relationships. So, you know, I was listening to former finance minister John Manley, who uh, was also deputy prime minister. He had a lot of jobs when he was in cabinet, saying, you know, never mind the middle class, the whatever class are defining the middle class. This government has to grow the economy. And there was no conversation about growing the economy, and I'm quoting him, during this campaign. So, you know, talking about the middle class and those, what was the catchphrase for the last those four years? Wanting to join it. Then those f fighting hard or working it. hard to join the middle class. Why separate this and not decide we are going to grow the Canadian economy? That seems to be something that all these economic portfolios, and there are several of them, right? Um, economic development, rural economic development, finance, you, uh, there are six, seven of them, mm -hmm. right? So why not get together and grow the Canadian economy? Well, that would benefit everybody. I'm, uh, I, I, I would argue that we did talk about how we should grow the economy and uh, have a Canadian economy that is for everyone. Uh, during the campaign, we talked about how we can support uh, small, medium businesses, how we're going to help grow also um, our, our trade. I, I believe that conversation was happening, but we also have challenges like climate change and environment. We have to find ways to have better uh, businesses that will help reduce the uh, emissions, but at the same time continue to thrive and to grow the economy. So I think we have that challenge now in our environment cycle to, to try to bring those and realize that we can't just do a piecemeal approach. We can't do just one thing economy, one thing environment. It's all kind of blended. And my role will be to bring the lens of the uh, middle class and make sure that we know the realities that we have in our different regions and also depending on the setting, if it's uh, rural, urban, or remote. Mona Forte, you will certainly bring some new energy to Cabinet. Thank I you. hope so, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. For talking to us Thank today. You.